Okay, everyone ready? Um, thank you for the people online. Thank you for joining. So today we're going to be doing a presentation on pain management. My name is Helen Lacunza. I'm Amanda. I'm Nicoletta. And I'm Aileen. And happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. We're from Mercy College. We're in the occupational therapy program. Um, so we're going to begin. So we have some questions we would like for you guys to answer. Um, who here deals with pain on a regular basis? You can just show your hands. Does anyone feel like their pain never goes away no matter what they try? Like trying any medicine or like doing any stretches? Uh, I, I feel it eases. I don't necessarily feel it away, but I feel it Do you do you guys feel like the pain limits your ability to do certain activities, certain tasks? Yeah. So the next slide here we have what is pain? We have the definition of pain being an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience caused by caused by changes in the body. So we have some true or false questions here. Is true or false? Pain is your body's way of telling you that something is wrong. True. Perfect. So next, medication is the only thing that can help with pain. False. Now we have there is only one type of pain. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Pain is a normal part of aging. True. No, no. Oh, so it's all happening. Yeah. 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 It affects an estimated 5 million adults, with an additional 1 in 10 newly diagnosed adults annually. It costs our society $560 billion to $635 billion a year in the U.S. So we have another true or false questions here. Question here: Chronic pain lasts forever. True or false? False. 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 Doesn't have anything ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. False. So false. 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 So yeah, it's false because basically chronic pain means long lasting. It doesn't mean forever. So you can do things to, to help you manage pain. So that's so really it's just chronic pain means long lasting, not forever. So there's two kinds of pain. There's acute pain and then there's chronic pain. So acute pain usually does not last that long. And it usually comes on very strong. But goes away as something heals. So this is like pulling a muscle or away from you. And then there's also chronic pain. So that's the one that lasts longer than three months. Usually this is like from a condition, like I said, like arthritis or chronic low back pain. And these can be released really through techniques that we'll talk about later. So just pain in general can really cause um, depression, anxiety, stress. So it can really affect your mental health. It can also cause social isolation because when you're in pain, you don't really want to go outside, right? You don't really want to do anything physical. It can also cause sleep issues. You know, when you're, you're in pain, you're like tossing and turning. And you used to like, oh, oh, sure. Sorry. Okay, hello. So it can use. Okay. It can cause sleep issues, like when you're tossing and turning at night. Um, it can cause a change in appetite. 
Also, an inability to complete activities, like when you're doing dishes or laundry, because a lot of people don't want to bend over or reach for things because of a pain, so you tend to avoid it. Okay, so. Okay, so we have a few more true or false questions. First, your mental health can affect your pain. Perfect. All right, and pain can lead to depression, anxiety, social isolation, sleep issues, and changes in appetite. And lastly, pain always limits participation in daily activities. False. False. All right, very good. Thank you. So mental health can affect pain. You guys got that right. So this really becomes like a cycle because if you perceive pain, you have poor mental health and more pain, which can cause depression, isolation, inactivity, and more fear of pain, which further causes you to perceive more pain. Another true or false, medication is the only thing that can help pain. False. 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 Good. So here we have a list of things that we can do to help with your mental health that reduces pain. For instance, there's something called pet therapy. Uh, we have music, you can listen to music, aromatherapy, talking to a friend, and like going on a walk. Nature. So pet, pet therapy is something you can incorporate in your daily life. If you guys have a dog, take them on walks. It keeps you active. Um, sometimes in like therapy, for instance, like occupational therapy, uh, we have the, the opportunity of having a dog after our session. And it actually <laughs> motivates our clients and, um, to participate in the therapy sessions because they're allowed to pet them and walk them after the session. And that actually helps with de decreasing pain and decreasing depression, which helps with the mental health. Another true or false. Um, alternative treatments such as yoga, mindfulness, aromatherapy, and are effective ways to reduce pain. True. true. Yes. Oh, sorry. So um, this is an alternate treatment to pain management. So mindfulness is the non-judgmental awareness of sensation, emotions, and thoughts. It can be done during any activity. It helps with acceptance of life, pain, appreciation of life, and greater sense of well-being. It helps with chronic low back pain, meditation, yoga, breath work. These are all just types of mindfulness. And there's a lot of research out there that supports these. Thank you. Okay, so Sorry, I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm so
for our Zoom friends, we're gonna do the video later because we're having some technical difficulties. Okay, anybody? Okay. Um, anybody do yoga ever? You like yoga? Okay, good. Okay, good. So there's so many different kinds of yoga. Um, one that we're gonna talk about today is restorative yoga. So this is all about breathing and stretching. The breathing is what really helps you calm your mind. And then the stretching helps you become active and more flexible, which helps prevent pain. And I'm sure you guys know that yoga, you can do anywhere. You can do it seated, you can do it standing on a mat. And you can always modify the pose also. So you can use towels um, behind your back or you can even use pillows under your knees. Okay, so we're gonna do some yoga poses today. Um, All right, so the first yoga pose we're gonna do is gonna be standing up. Can everybody stand up? Okay. So I want everyone to relax and just focus on your breath and the movement, okay? So everybody breathe in and stand up tall and breathe out, bring the shoulder blades down your back. We do that a few more times. Breathe in, breathe out. Shoulder blades down, breathe in, breathe out. One more time, everybody breathe in and breathe out, arms down, shoulder blades down your back. Good. So now we're gonna do two poses seated. Everybody have a seat? Okay, so we're gonna do a cat cow, seated cat cow. So everybody breathe in and arch your back, look up. And breathe out, round your back, look down. Good. Breathe in, look up, arch the back. And breathe out, round the back, look down. Okay, three more times. One, breathe in. And round the back, breathe out. Breathe in. And look down, round the back, one more time. Everybody breathe in. And out. Good. Now the last one we're gonna do is a seated sun salutation. So everybody breathe in, bring your arms above your head, put your palms together. And breathe out, arms down, shoulder blades down your back. Good. Breathe in. Arms up, palms together. And breathe out, arms down, shoulder blades down the back. Two more times, breathe in, arms up. And breathe out, arms down to your sides. One more time, breathe in, palms together. And breathe out, shoulder blades down the back. Okay, how do you feel? So yoga is has so many different benefits. It reduces aches and pains, enhances balance and flexibility and mobility, which is really important to help prevent injury and prevent pain. Um, it even works on muscle strength because sometimes you have to hold the poses for so long that you're using your muscles. And because it's so focused on mindfulness, it reduces stress, improves sleep and decreases risk of depression. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about physical exercise. Working out comes with many benefits, including, but not limited to, increase in social participation, increase in balance ability, improving quality of life. It also improves your quality of sleep, and it decreases your um, chance of falling as well as overall pain. 
Anyone can participate in exercise and it's very easy to see a benefit from it. Okay, so whether you're working out in a group or with a partner, this overall increases your social activity and it increases your motivation and helps um, keep you more consistent with the workout. It's also just a fun way to spend time with a friend or a family. And adults can participate in long lasting but low intensity workouts such as walks or low duration but high intensity such as swimming. And aside from cardiovascular workouts, you can also do strength training. And this will help increase your bone and muscle strength. Um, so any physical activity can increase your chance of injury, obviously, because you're moving so much. So just make sure before you begin a workout program, you talk to your healthcare professional. And next, we're going to do some workouts together. You can do these seated or standing. We're gonna begin with standing our seated marches, but I'm gonna show you standing. Begin, we're gonna lift your left leg up. Okay, and then lower it back down. You guys can do it seated or standing, whatever you prefer. So when you lower it back down, lift your right leg up and back down. And we're gonna do five reps of this, okay? So left up, back down, right, again. Keep going, you guys are doing great. Two more. And then this is the last rep of it. Perfect. So this can help with your balance as well as increase your hip flexibility. Next, we're gonna do the sit to stand squat. So I can easily show it. So we're gonna start in the seated position. All right, and then we're gonna come to that stand. You guys are gonna take a nice deep breath. And when you're ready, we're gonna sit back down. All right, so you're gonna do two more times. So we're gonna to come to a stand. Take a deep breath. Sit back down. And one last time, stand. Deep breath. And sit. Perfect. So not only does this increase the strength in your hips and your thigh muscle and your core, it also improves your ability to do everyday tasks, such as getting in and out of a car, seated at a table. So it just helps with your participation in everyday activities. And lastly, we are gonna do the seated jumping jacks. Okay, so while you guys are all seated, you're gonna bring your hands and your legs wide. Perfect, they're showing you great. And then back to a closing stance. We're gonna do this one three more times. So we're gonna open. Perfect, close. One more time. Perfect. So this is just great for your overall heart health. And it's just a fun way to increase your flexibility and get moving. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Okay, now we're going to talk about arm pain. So as occupational therapists, we get trained in hand therapy, which is any kind of pain from your fingers down up to your shoulder. So these are some common um, conditions. Arthritis, which causes joint stiffness and pain. You can have shoulder pain. You can have frozen shoulder. Um, tendonitis, which is inflammation of any tendon in your arm. That's more of like an ache pain. And then you can also have nerve pain. Um, which is more of a tingling, like numbness. So that's carpal tunnel. Has anybody heard of carpal tunnel? Mm -hmm. Do any of you have any of these conditions, arthritis? Arthritis. Arthritis. I haven't been diagnosed with tendonitis, but if I, as you're describing, mm -hmm. it might be. No. Right. It's more of like a soreness in the muscle. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about things you can do for arthritis <laughs> in the next slide. 
Okay, so this is a lot of um, good techniques that can be used for arthritis pain. So um, everything on the left side is about heat. So you wanna make sure to talk to your doctor or therapist before using, but they are good options. So of course the hot pack, you don't have a hot pack, you can use like a rolled up towel, run it under some hot water, and you can leave that for about 10 minutes. You can also do something called a contrast bath, which goes along with the heat. So we have some bowls here just to show you. So the point of the contrast bath is that you have one bowl with hot water, tolerable, and then you have another bowl with cold water. So you put your hand in the hot water for about 10 minutes, and then you go to the cold for a minute, back to the hot for four minutes, back to the cold for a minute. So you do that cycle for about five times, and that's gonna help release some of that pain, that joint pain. Another thing you can do is use a paraffin wax. So that's the picture in the middle, the bottom picture. It's literally wax. You can buy it on Amazon actually. So you plug it in, the wax warms up, and you dip your hands into the wax about three times. Again, you leave it on for about 10 minutes, and then you just peel the wax off. So that is another way of using heat. You can, you don't have to, you can cover it with like um, a, a towel to help the heat penetrate more. And then what else? So it's very important to use joint protection for arthritis. So the point of this, the big takeaway is, you know, when you button your shirt and you have to use all your little fingers, you want to avoid doing that and you want to use more of a grip whenever possible. So that picture on top, that's used for um, buttoning a shirt so that you have to just hold the grip instead of the buttons. Um, they also make this with uh, utensils as well, like spoons. And add like that foam. Yeah, you can also buy like foam. Instead of like this, mm -hmm. so it protects your foam more. Yeah, so that's the whole point. You wanna use a grip whenever possible instead of fingers. Um, the picture in the middle, that's a prefab splint. So basically, sometimes the best thing to do is immobilize your wrist. So if you buy this online, you can just use it all day and it'll, um, basically the point is to prevent repetitive motions. And then good posture is also important. So with shoulder pain, you can also do use warm and cold pads. And again, you must Talk to your doctor before using the warm and cold pads. Um, you can place them. Sorry, <laughs> okay. You can place them on for five to ten minutes, three times a day for two to three weeks. This will help um, alleviate the pain. The hot pads help with the blood flow and the inflammation, which causes reducing the pain. Whereas the cold pads just help with reducing the pain. Um, for your arm support, you could just um, have your arms to your side, have your thumbs pointed up, and you could try to sleep with one to two pillows at night. That will also help with your pain. If you're having shoulder pain, you can level it um, more. And again, you must, you must check with your doctor before using hot to cold pad, pads because we don't want you to hurt yourself. So this is one of the exercises we can do if you have tendinitis. This is called golfer's elbow because it works the, your, it's called flexor muscles, which are the muscles on the top of your arm. And just you can put your arm up, push back. You can even put it, do it on the table or on a wall, like the way Helen's doing it. Oh, with the exercises. Sorry. There's another type of tendonitis called tennis elbow, and this helps your extensors, which are like your the muscles on your forearm. And then you can do the same exercises. You can push down. 
<laughs> it hurts. Well, you want to hold it. Yeah, you want to hold it with your other hand. You can hold it for about five to ten seconds. <laughs> so nerve pain. So for, for nerve pain, we recommend nerve glides, which is a type of exercise that can help get irritated nerves stuck between your joints released. Um, Remember when you're performing the glides that we're about to show you, if you feel any numbness, numbness or tingling, just discontinue, talk to your healthcare provider, see if it is an appropriate method for you, as you always should first. So for the median nerve, for the, for the median nerve, if it gets compressed in your wrist muscles, it can lead to carpal tunnel. So here is the exercise you can do to help with this. Will it avoid it? Yes, it can help avoid it, as well as decrease the pain if you already do have carpal tunnel. Okay, so here is how to do the nerve pain glide. We're going to start with your wrist in neutral with the fingers and thumbs in flexion. The wrist in neutral with the fingers and thumb extended. Next, we're going to do the wrist and fingers are extended with the thumb in neutral. Next, we are going to make sure they're all extended with the forearm in supination. And then lastly, the wrist, fingers, and thumb are extended, the forearm is supinated, and the other hand gently stretches the thumb. So just do this for 10 reps whenever possible. And remember, if it's tingling or numbness, talk to your healthcare provider first. Yes. And we, I believe we're sharing this PowerPoint so you guys will have access to these photos. Okay, so next we're gonna go to the ulnar glide. <laughs> so the ulnar glide can get compacted in your elbow, which can lead to cubital tunnel syndrome. This can cause pain when you're sleeping, leading to decreased quality of sleep and affect some of your daily activities. So to work on this, here is the following exercise. So position with the affected arm straight in front of you at shoulder height with the wrist and fingers bent toward you. Slowly open the fingers and extend the wrist and bend at the elbow. Now you can position the affected arm straight out to the side at the shoulder height with the wrist and fingers bent and rotate the arm outward externally. Side, side bend neck to the opposite side. All right, so again, if you guys can do this for 10 repetitions a day, it can really make a difference in the pain you could be experiencing. So while she's putting that up, lastly, we have the radial nerve, which can lead, lead to radial nerve palsy. Yeah, where is that? The nerve. So for this one, if you guys want to follow along with the pictures, starting with your arm at your side, turn the arm outward, bend the hand and reach up and just stretch the arm out. And it can help release the nerve again from being stuck between the bones in your wrist. So these nerves all go up to the neck. So as long as you are bending your neck the opposite way, it can also help. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about ergonomics, which is means positioning. So as you can see in the picture, 
want to have a good 90 90 90 when you sit down you don't want to be slouched over you don't want to have your legs dangling you want to have it nice and flat on the floor <laughs> sit up straight and if you're using a computer you want to have it a little leveled up you know, if you're using a laptop it's really hard to you know have good ergonomics but you can stack books to make it a little higher so that your eyes are straight at the screen. You're not looking down and you're not looking up. When you do that, you're straightening your neck. You go up or down, you're gonna hurt your neck doing that. Especially for prolonged periods of time when you're using the computer, you really wanna have good er ergonomics. Um, so ergon er ergonomics, so the proper position is to prevent injury. Um, poor posture can cause musculoskeletal pain. Um, it addresses a variety of activities. So you, you want to have good er ergonomics for any activity that you're doing, whether that is cooking, gardening, sleeping. We talked a little bit about sleeping with the with the pillows. You want to have good posture when you're sleeping. <laughs> well, we talked a little bit about the arms. So having your arms, because if you sleep on your arm all night, you're basically impinging your nerves. So that's why maybe you wake up and you're like, oh, that hurt. It's because you were sleeping on your arm probably. So you wanna, especially if you have pillows on both sides, you kind of encourage your body to stay in one position versus like rolling over and you know, being on your shoulder for too long, being on your hand for too long. Um, so yeah, even being in a car, you wanna have good position as well. So make sure like your seat is adjusted appropriately um, and things like that. So do's and don't, you want to work what's it called your power zone. So your power zone is in this picture. You want to be in this area, not reaching. Excessive reaching is not, is going to, you know, cause injury. And it's going to cause arm pain and things like that. Um, if you need to, you can use equipment. Sorry. So you can use things like um, your pads. Yes. So like if you're on the desk, right? And if you're on the desk like this, you want to have like a pad there because when, you, when you're excessively putting pressure on your elbow or your wrist, again, a pinching a nerve. So you want to have padding there. That could be on a computer. As we said before, the bed, pillows. Um, when you're walking, you want to have good posture. Um, and you want to lift with bigger muscles. So that's why it, when they say to squat, when you're picking up something heavy, it's because our legs have are the biggest muscles in the body. You don't want to pick with your back and you don't want to pick with your arms. You have smaller muscles here. You want to go on your legs, squat down to pick if you're picking something heavy. Um, again, this this is our power zone. It's, it's not. If you can't do it, don't do it. Definitely no. But if you have to pick up some, something heavy, you know, sorry about that. Yeah. So those are some do's, some don'ts that you also want to keep in mind. Like Amanda said, don't rest on your elbows or your wrists. If you rest on your elbows too long, that can cause cubital tunnel. If you rest on your wrist, if a table is up to here, that can cause carpal tunnel. Also, try not to do repetitive reaching because that can cause shoulder pain. Okay, this is a big one. When you twist, when you're sitting and you sit like this and you have to reach something over here, try not to do this because you're only twisting with your body. But you want to stand up and get whatever it is. <laughs> Um, and again, try to have posture like the picture in the middle. That's very important. Try not to lift with just your fingers. So I have an example here. So when you go grocery shopping, they don't give out the plastic bags anymore. But when you use these, you're holding, you're using just your hand. So really all of the muscles in your, in your forearm are being used. But when you do this, 
you're using your biceps, which are bigger muscles. So that can cause, that can prevent strain on your fingers. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about energy cons conservation. So this is basically modifying how you carry out day-to-day -day activities. Um, these activities are called work, rest, or play. Um, and it sets the, and modifies the environment in which you conduct these activities. So when we talk about energy con conservation, I want you to remember six keys which are prioritize, plan, positioning, pacing yourself, positive attitude, and personal freedom. We're gonna talk about it. Okay, so prioritize plan. What I mean by this is that you prioritize what you need to do in the day. This is gonna help you reduce the need using too much energy throughout your day. You're gonna prioritize what you need to get done that day. You wanna plan, plan daily activities, and scheduled by alternating heavy and light tasks. Maybe you want to start with a heavy task first, then go to a light task, back to a heavy, just so you can kind of like pace yourself as well. And that you're not using too much energy because if you do heavy, 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 you're going to be tired. Um, you want to set realistic goals. So what can you do during the day? What, what, what are your plans for the day? You want to make sure that it's achievable. You're gonna break down the task into smaller, more manageable parts. So it could be like cooking, break it down to smaller, smaller, you know, tasks. Maybe you wanna prep your whatever you're cooking beforehand and then cook it the next day. That's saving you a lot of energy and a lot of work. Um, you wanna eliminate unnecessary steps of a task, so something you don't really need to do repetitively. Um, and minimize the frequency of going up and downstairs during the day. So if you're moving a lot up and downstairs, it's really intense for some people to just keep going up and down the stairs. Um, so you want to eliminate, you know, things you don't really have to do. Maybe you need to, um, you know, bring all your groceries up at once or something like that. That's going to help, you know, the tricks of going up and down the stairs if you have stairs. Um, so things like that is, is what you want to prioritize and plan throughout the day. So positioning. Um, we talked a little bit about positioning, um, but to save energy, you can sit down doing a task. So if you're like, for instance, if you're cooking, you can sit down while you cook it. If you know the counter is, you know, the, the right amount of ho um, height that you can do that. Um, you want to avoid tasks that require repetitive and prolonged out standing and squatting. Um, avoid raising your arms too high above your shoulder level or bending over for it's too long. Um, Keeping your body straight while performing, performing tasks for posture can consume more energy. So back to the ergonomics. You're going to consume more energy by, you know, doing that excessive reaching and things like that. Um, avoid tiring and awkward postures that may affect breathing. So if you're slouched over, you're also impacting your lungs by doing that. You want to have a good, you know, straight posture. Um, keep arms straight, close to the body when carrying um, objects. You want to spread the load between arms. So if you're going grocery shopping, you know, don't put too much on one side, like too many heavy things on one side of your arm. Kind of balance it out between the left and right arm. Um, and you want to support your elbows and forearms. We talked about, about that a little bit already. Okay. All right, so pacing yourself. Before starting an activity, you want to make sure you have enough time to do it so you don't need to rush at the end. You also want to follow a steady um, pace, and you want to listen to your body's messages. If you feel that you're becoming tired, it's important to take a break at that moment rather than wait till you're way too exhausted, because then you can't resume an activity after. You're going to need a longer break period. And after you've completed a task, it's very important to take a moment to yourself, take some deep breaths before you move on to the next activity, just for energy conservation to increase. and a positive attitude. Having the right outlook can help with a lot of different things. So rather than focus on what you can't do, it's better to focus on what you're still able to do and make the most of it. For the activities you have challenges with, try find creative ways that you can adapt. Like when Helen showed the shopping bag, 
rather than have a difficult time holding it by your side with your arm, try and carry it with two hands so it's a better weight load across your arms. So this is the first slip breathing technique we were talking about earlier. So basically the point of this is to help empty out the stale air in your lungs and make room for good oxygenated air for your lungs and your blood. So the way you do this is you inhale through your nose and then you exhale through a pursed lip. So like you're whistling or blowing out a candle. Your lips should be in about like an O. And the exhale is gonna be longer than the inhale. So you're gonna inhale for two, two seconds, exhale for four seconds. We're gonna try it. But if it doesn't feel natural, you don't have to exhale for too long, okay? So everybody breathe in through the nose for two and breathe out through the pursed lips like you're blowing out a candle for four. Good, inhale for two. Blow out a candle for four. Inhale for two. And blow like you're whistling for four. This is really helpful um, when you're doing activities that make you short of breath, like when you're walking up the stairs. So you can do it while you're walking up the stairs. I, I actually do press the breathing too because I have asthma and when I exercise, sometimes my asthma gets triggered so I take a breath. I, I stop what I'm doing and I just breathe through my nose and breathe out. So if you have asthma or anything that, any conditions that affect the lungs, it's really good and helpful to get that oxygen in. Um, so some examples of energy conservation, uh, we have dressing. So I'm just gonna break down some of the uh, dressing tasks. So a way to preserve energy in a dressing task, you want to sit down instead of standing up. That's gonna save a lot of energy. Um, you could gather your clothes the day before. That's also gonna save you a lot of energy because instead of walking to the closet, oh, what am I gonna wear today? You have it all ready for you doing your, your day. I really like to do that because in the morning, there's a lot of things to do. <laughs> there's a lot of things to do in the morning. So um, that's really helpful. Depending on your routine, you may wanna dress your lower half first because if you dress your top first, you're kind of restricting yourself from doing bending over sometimes. So <laughs> that's good. Again, if you're restricting yourself, then you know, you're, you're using more energy. You wanna minimize bending. So I'm gonna show you, you know, some tools that can be used. Um, for dressing in the next slide. And another thing you wanna do is think about what type of clothing um, you may find. So like some clothes are easier to put on, for instance. So like, you know, putting on a button up shirt is a little easier because you don't have to go overhead to put it on. Um, and like step on shoes to be, you know, easy, just slide them on and you're out the door. Um, using front fasteners as well, you know, it's really hard to reach back so zip up anything, to button anything. So you might want to invest in clothes that have fat fasteners in the, in the front instead. Um, this is just a, a few examples of dressing equipment. So we have our reacher in the middle. This is my reacher. We have the, the dressing hook, the button hook. We showed that a little earlier today. This is a sock aid, and this is a dressing stick. So, it, and if you look at the sake, you don't have you don't even have to bend down. You kind of like you call it kind of fishing. So you like kind of throw it and you fish for the sock and put your foot in. Um, so that reduces your need to have to bend over. Um, the dressing stick will help with like trying to reach back because that that could be hard for some people. Um, and the reacher reacher has many uses, not only for dressing. You know, if you drop something, you can pick it up with a uh, reacher. Um, um, so we just want to say thank you. Is there any questions? Yeah. You know, when I do, I do chair yoga, and sometimes I feel I'm not doing the breathing exactly the way I should be, but when you said that the breathing helps to relax, and then the yoga, we get the benefit, I felt a little bit better about it, mm -hmm. you know, but it is very important, that, like the breathing, that it helps to in the yoga session for oh so the question was that when you do yoga do you have to do the breathing even though you might not be able to you might not be able to hold the breath you don't have to it does help but the whole mindfulness is about focusing on how you're breathing 
So if you, like with the first lift, if you can't exhale for the whole four seconds, that's okay. But it's still giving you the benefit of mindfulness and being in the moment with the movement. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, so you're going to get a copy of this. Of this final okay. Can you read it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I believe she recorded it as well. So you can go back to it. So a lot of the things we addressed today were was specific to our spoken practice, occupational therapy. So if you ever need like services or anything like that, I would recommend you go to an MP state. Like if, if you're having, you know, pain or something like that, to talk to your MP about it. And you can just, you know, they can refer you to occupational therapy. Uh -huh. And those tools that you uh, demonstrate, I yeah. think people probably can't have the arthritis foundation. Yeah, OT is work heavy yeah. with the adaptive equipment part as well. I mean, usually they rec they would recommend it for, like if you had a hip procedure and stuff like that, they will definitely send you home with some of those equipment. But if you have like progressive diseases or things like that that cause you discs and stuff like that, you may also need those those types of equipment. They don't really give it off the bat. That's why I'm saying for oh, you can't order. It. You can order it if on Amazon. Def oh, Amazon has that. everything. So you can definitely order, you know, there's a ton of equipment you could get for pretty cheap on Amazon as well. If you need that type of you know, equipment, if you feel like it's steady. Yeah. Could you make a better distinction between physical therapist <laughs> and occupational therapist as a career, let's say? That's, well, what, what that's one of the biggest questions, questions you get. Um, Nobody yeah. knows. <laughs> okay, I know. So occupational physical therapy is all about the physical body and rehabilitating that. Occupational therapy's goal is okay. to get you back to doing activities of daily living, which is just your routines. So and because of that, physical therapy works on mainly the arm. Like I said, that one slide was all about the arm. That's what we do. Physical therapists wouldn't really do that as much because when you're doing all your activities, you have to use your hands and your arms. And then we also go into cognition um, and a lot of other fields as well, mental health. But it's all with the goal of getting the person back to their daily independent routine. So, so like, so occupational therapy has the word occupational on it. So what we focus on is the occupation of the person. So what do you have trouble with doing? If you have trouble doing something, you most likely can get services from a home team. You know, so we do things like that. We have trouble dressing, we have trouble breathing, or, or you know, even um leisure activities we can help do. Um, so that's really the main difference between the two. But we do work side by side a lot. And we do poultry and we do you know cross paths in the career. Um, so it is kind of similar in some sense. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, we have a video. The mindfulness video online. Oh yes. We can put it in the chat if you want. I can even answer it that way. Yeah. Does anybody online have any questions? You can write it in the chat box. No, so you nope. no thank you. I appreciate the presentation, though. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, there you So sake, the, the question was, how do we stretch out the sock to put it over the sake, correct? Is that how do you use the sake? Typically, you roll it up, you roll it all the way up until it's like um, basically like a ball, basically. Stretch it out and you put it on. Yes, some socks are not meant for it. You know, sometimes you might need looser um, socks for that. But another way to not even use a sock aid is just bring it, if you can, to bring it like over, put on the sock. By putting your leg like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're just your yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, of course. I can explain it a little more. So the, it's usually used for people that have had like a hip replacement, but anybody can use it. You roll it up, you put it over the sock aid, and then. Is the sock aid like this one? Yes, it's, it's big. Wide. It's, it's wide. So the sock stretches over the socket, which is pretty wide, about this big. You throw that on the floor and then you get your foot into the socket, which has the sock over it already. 
and then you pull up so your sock ends up over your foot. And then the socket ends up outside of your sock. So that's how you use it. I mean, if you if you get it from the occupation therapist, they'll definitely yeah, show you. They'll show you. Yeah. And there's also there's also a lot of videos online showing how to use all of this equipment too on YouTube. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's do a quick video. This to end our session. We're gonna do a quick three minute mindfulness video. Okay. Fly with Abel and Phi. Four. Breathe out through your mouth. Four. Three. Two. I'm just turning it down. That's loud. <laughs> Fly with Abel and Phi. Body scan meditation. Sit in a comfortable position and bring attention to your body. Close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. You can notice your body seated wherever you are, feeling the weight of your body on the chair or on the floor. Take a few deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four. Breathe out through your mouth. Four, three, two, one. Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four. Breathe out through your mouth. Four, three, two, one. Now bring your attention to the top of your head. Sense this area. What do you feel? Stillness or a feeling running through your hair? Breathe. And as you breathe, relax the top of your head. Continue to breathe and move your attention to the side of your head in your ears. What do you sense? Do you hear anything? Now bring your attention to the neck and throat. Let them be soft. Relax. Soften your jaw. Let your face and facial muscles be soft. Smile softly and gently. Notice your back against the chair. Bring your attention into your stomach area. If your stomach is tense or tight, let it soften. Take a breath. Notice your hands. Are your hands tense or tight? See if you can allow them to soften. Notice your arms. Feel any sensation in your arms. Let your shoulders be soft. Bring your attention to your legs and your feet. Feel your feet touching the ground and making a connection with it. Now notice your whole body present. Take one more breath. Be aware of your whole body as best you can. Take a breath. And then, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So that comes to an end of our presentation. I um, just want to say thank you to the Riverdale Community Service for having us today. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for having us. Uh, thank you for everyone who came out. We really appreciate it. Uh, we just want you to stay for one second to fill out our survey at the end. Um, thank you for everyone who came online. Again, we're from Mercy College. Um, I think it's a blessing program. Uh, my name is Amanda. My name is Aileen. I'm Nicoletta. And I'm Helen. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you